Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about how to design primers, how to perform in silico cloning, and uh, how to check, you know, what will be the size of the PCR product uh, in the Synapsin. In addition to this, I'm also going to talk about how to import the sequences uh, to this uh, primer design tool called Snapzine. Okay, I'm going to talk everything in detail about primer design in silico cloning and so on. Okay, first, in order to uh, get the sequences of your gene of interest, uh, you can go to genome uh, browser, that is UCSC uh, genome browser. Okay, so I already typed this website and I'm already here in this browser. So uh, basically, I want to amplify uh, the uh, my target from human uh, human genome, okay, from human DNA. So that's why I'm going to select human. But if you have mouse DNA, you can select mouse. If you have DNA from the rats, you can select rats and so on. It depends on which uh, species your DNA belongs to, okay? Mine is mouse, so I have already selected it. And I'm just going to type here the standard symbol of the gene, and that is TMPRSS2 for my gene of interest. Okay, so I'm just going to click here, and then this is the standard gene symbol uh, for transmembrane protease, and that I'm interested in, uh, of which I want to um, design the primers flanking the three prime untranslated region. Okay, I'm just going to press go. And then now we have this window and I'm just going to click here at TNPRSS2, right? I just clicked here and from here, I will go to this genome, genomic sequences, okay? I'm just going to click here. So because I want to design the primer flanking the three prime untranslated region of this, um, this gene, TN, TNPRSS2. So that's why I'm going to check this, but it depends on you, okay? Which... Uh, uh, which region uh, you want to target um, by your primers. But I want to amplify 3' prime on UTR of uh, my gene of interest. So that's why I'm going to check this. And because to design the primers, I want to select uh, some upstream and downstream bases, just 3,000, 3, and to, to have the site where, you know, I can have the good uh, primer annealing site with good GC content and any link temperature okay after i do this then i i will just press, click on submit right now i have this sequence okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy this sequence okay so i just copied this sequence after that i will open my snap gene as snap snap gene right so i'm just going to open snap gene okay so you can download this snap gene uh okay continue yes so uh, from the from the website you can download this i opened my snapseed then i'm gonna click on new dna file okay i'm just gonna click on new dna file and i will paste the sequence okay and i will just type this uh, tmprss2 okay and i'll press okay and it, uh, it, it, because the program recognized some sequences as Kuzak sequence and there's another one, but I just don't want these features to be added. That's why I'm just going to press cancel. But you can add it. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I press cancel. And now I have the vector math of um, 3 prime UTR plus 3000 basis upstream and 3000 basis downstream. Okay, good. So I want to view it here is in math map view but i want to view it in sequence so i will click here sequence okay good so now this is my three prime utr plus three thousand basis of stress uh, upstream and three thousand basis downstream right so i just want to annotate where exactly is my uh, three prime untranslated reason uh, for this what i'm gonna do is that i'm just gonna go back to ucsc genome browser okay i go back and I will uncheck, okay, this downstream 3000 basis and promoter, okay, upstream 3000 basis, and then I'll press submit. So now I have the three prime untranslated reason sequence of T 
TMPR SS2, I will copy this. And then what I will do is that I will paste it, or not paste it actually, I will try to find it, Control F, and then I will paste it here, okay, Control V, and yes, I found my three prime untranslated region, okay, and then I'm just gonna annotate it for this, I need to go to this features, okay, and add feature, and here I will type UTR, okay, and then press okay, good. So this is my a region of interest, which I want to amplify, okay? So then I have to design the primers. So to design the primers, the primer length should be, at the, at the basis of, at least try to keep it in the range of 16 to 22 nucleotides and at least 40% uh, uh, or I would say 40 to 50% uh, GC content, they're really important and not more than, you know, 3G or 4G continuously, uh, for 3Cs continuously, okay, or the same applies um, for A and Ts at the end, okay? So, then what I will do, okay? So, I'm just gonna, because this is my region of interest, which I want to amplify. That's why I'll go upstream, you see here, it's uh, on the basis, and I'll just come down, and very close to this, uh, my reason of in, uh, interest upstream on the five prime side, I will select some bases here, okay? I'll just select some nucleotide bases. Oh, it's already uh, 51 with 11 nucleotide. No one, I just don't want this. Maybe I want from here, let's see. And 13 bases, and it also shows the melting temperature here, okay? 43 with the 1751 and 18, 19, and with 20, it's, yes, 56, it's good. So I will just select this, and then go to primers, okay? You just need to select the bases in such a way that you have some, at least around 50%, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this content, and, and that the nucleotide number is between, uh, let's say, 16 to 22, okay? So, and just go to add, so primer and add primer, right? So because this is on the five prime side, so this is top strand, okay? It's really important, okay? This is top strand. So click on top strand because this is upstream of, of my uh, reason of interest. Good. So then I will type here uh, forward. This is my forward primer and then I will click on add to the template. Okay, so I already designed my forward primer. Now I want to design my reverse primer. So I will go down and so this is a uh, three prime end. So in the same way, I will select bases 16 to 22 and I will try to keep melting temperature around uh, 55 because 50 to 60 TM is fine but I'll try to keep it around 55, that's what I like. This is already too much, I will not select this. Maybe I need to choose the area where there are Gs and Cs. Okay, so 14 bases and 17 bases and 19, 55, okay, yeah, 56 with 22, and this is a bit too much maybe. I just go here then. So 22 bases, 54, no. Aha, uh -huh. so I think uh, maybe I go from here to, oh, 21 bases already, this is also too much. 56 with 23 and 54, no. I'll just come here and then let's see. Three Z's is too much. Yes, two Z's, that's good. Okay, so I'm just gonna select this. And I will again go to primers and then add, right? So here it is top or bottom strand. It is bottom strand because it's at three prime end, okay? Really important. Forward is top and reverse is bottom. Okay, so I need to name it. So it will be our reverse. Good, so 22 on yield basis, okay, no problem. 
as primer to the template. Okay, 22 is up to 22 is fine. Okay, good. So now I have designed my primers. Good. So if I want to check what will be the size of this PCR product, okay, it's very simple. And if you want to amplify, you know, this three prime untranslated region of TMP RSS2 from human genomic DNA, and you want to see what will be the size of this PCR product when you run agarose cell electrophoresis, then what you can do is you can go to actions and click on PCR. Okay. And then you need to give the primers. Okay. So forward primer and also reverse primer. And it will show the size of PCR product. So it's going to be 191 to base pairs long. So you will uh, check the size in um, on, on your agar cell picture. Okay. So this is uh, how you can check the size of the PCR product. Okay. So I don't need it now. So I'm just going to cancel it. Right. I showed you how to amplify uh, the, 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 the region or the, the area of the interest from, from the given uh, genomic sequence by designing the primers. So now I want to uh, show you how to design the primers for molecular cloning and how to perform molecular cloning in silico. Okay, so, so this is our insert, right? This is our insert. So if you want to perform molecular cloning in silico, then you will also need vector sequence. This is only the insert. From here, we'll only have insert sequence. So to get the vector sequence, okay, I want to design, uh, make this in silico cloning in the vector called uh, this luciferase vector for microRNA. This name is somewhere, uh, this vector is from Promega. Yeah, this, uh, I mean, the name doesn't matter actually. Yeah, this is the name here, Premier Glow Vector Sequence Reference, yes. So what I will do is that I will just copy the sequence of this vector, right? So you will get the vector sequence from the company or from the supplier, okay? Uh, so I'll just copy it. And then in the similar way, I will paste it in Snapzine. So I need to go open new and then new DNA file. And then I will paste it here. Okay, good. And this is my vector. This is my vector sequence. And then I'm just going to press OK. And yes, it recognized some features. Now I want to keep these features. So I will click on Add Features. Yes, now I have my vector map. OK, this is my vector map. If, if, if you look closely in the vector map, you will see that this is the multiple cloning site. This is the site where uh, we will put our insert. OK, so what we will do then? So we need to look what are the enzymes present in this multiple cloning site. PME1, ecovaron sac, NH1, XH1, XBAR1 cell, okay, and so on, right? So XH1 first and then cell XBAR1. So what I will do now is that I will check in the insert, okay, I'm just going to take, you know, let's say this XH1 and XBAR1 enzyme uh, to cut uh, this uh, vector. So what I'm going to do in my insert I will check that if XH01 and XBAR1, if these enzymes are present within this region. I see ZRA8TA1, these two enzymes. For example, I cannot select this enzyme even if it was present in multiple cloning site because it is present in the in, in my insert. Okay, so that's why I'm not gonna select this enzyme. It's a very important point, guys. You have to pay attention that attention to the fact that you know your enzymes are not within the reason that will be amplified okay it's very very important you cannot choose any of these enzymes okay but you can choose enzymes that are binding uh, let's say we can choose this one it doesn't matter because it is outside our uh, reason of interest okay so good uh, insert reason so we can choose this enzyme but i will choose xh one and x bar one like i said before so um then what I need to do, okay, for the molecular cloning, we need to also add uh, this uh, sequence, the cleavage, cleavage sites for, for these enzymes, the enzymes that you select. I selected XS01 and x one then I need to add the sequences in these, uh, this forward and reverse primer, okay? This is forward here and the reverse one was down, okay? So what I will do then, I will then go to Cleavage close to the end of this document from NAV Lab. If you type it in, 
in the Google, you will find it cleavage close to the end of DNA fragments. So I want to add these uh, cleavage sites for the enzymes that I selected. Okay, so let's go to XHO1 and XBAR1. Why I selected this? Another reason is that you see here XHO1, <clears throat> this is the, uh, you know, when you digest 12 hours, you will get 75% digestion. It's good. This is good. And XBAR1, yes, we if we take this sequence and digest is 10 hours, it's going to give us and more than 90% digestion, which is good. So, so I'm just I'm gonna take this and this, or is it this sequence um, and add in my primer. So how will I do that? XSO1 and X bar one, okay? Which one to take, which one to put in five prime end and which one to put in uh, three prime end. So for this, we need to look in the vector map which one comes first? So XSO1 first and then XBAR1, right? So we will put XSO1 sequence to the uh, forward primer. Okay, so need to uh, go back here and XHO1 sequence. So we will take this one. Okay, control copy and then put it in here so what i need to do then i just need to double click here in the primer that i have already designed and place the cursor here and paste the sequence okay and then press okay good so now i have already designed forward primer for the cloning and i want to design the reverse primer to for the reverse primer what i will do i will double click here and then I will go to I will go to this New England BioLife this file NEV file and I will choose these because here you see it's more than 90% okay I'm not going to choose the first one because it says there will be no digestion after 8 hours so I'm just going to select these okay control C copy and then I will put the sequence in the reverse primer okay so I have already selected reverse primer so what I need to do just double click here and then place the cursor here and paste that sequence okay good so and then I'll press okay so now when we amplify our uh, three prime on translation reason using this reverse primer and this forward primer we will have the amplified product which will contain the cleavage site for XHO1 and XBAR1, okay? It's really important, guys. It's really important. We we designed so primer in this way to give, to make the, uh, the amplified product to contain the cleavage sites for the restriction enzymes that we chose. And I already explained to you how we choose the enzymes. Okay, good. So then I, what I will do, I will do this, um, same thing I did before do the PCR here in silico and I need to select the primers so it's gonna be forward here and reverse here okay so the size of my PCR product is 1934 base pairs good so then now I will go to my vector because this is this insert is linearized so i have to also make my vector linearized this is in circular form so then i have to cut this vector also okay with which enzymes xho1 and x bar one okay xso1 and x bar one these two enzymes okay because i chose i put these restriction sites in in my uh, inserts and because insert will uh, when we cut the insert so there will be the sticky ends left okay good so then i will uh, go to what i need to do okay i have this vector sequence right i have this vector map i can also make it like sequence here and what i will do is that i will go to actions and restrictions and insert cloning and then i'll go to insert fragment one fragment because we have only one insert okay i have the vector so for the vector i will cut with which ones 
You remember, right? XHO1, XHO1, and X bar 1, X bar 1. Okay, good. So, this is my insert, uh, sorry, vector. Vector is now linear, right? So, I want to put my ins this insert here in this vector and that will finally make the product clone. So, then I need to select insert here, click on the insert and then go to please choose and click on amplified DNA, which I just amplified, right? Amplified DNA. And then what I need to do, I also need to cut this amplified DNA with which one? X H O one and X bar one. Okay, X bar one. Right. So you see, this this was my linearized vector, right? And this this is my insert. It perfectly fit here, and this is the product. Okay. So I press clone. The size of the product will be nine to six seven. If it will not fit, it will not be like this. You will not be able to clone. So this is now cloned DNA. Okay. So where, okay, you see, I have my ins, uh, insert three prime UTR inserted in this vector, the luciferase vector. Okay. Good. So my cloning in silico cloning was successful. Right. So. The size of this clone will be nine to six seven base pairs. If you if you if you do the cloning experiment and and then do the restriction the enzyme digestion and want to check the size, you know, then you which depending on which enzyme you use, you can actually uh, verify that this is perfect clone. You can also perform sequencing and this to to select the clone has worked. Okay, to select the enzymes, you know, there is in in this browser. In this in this software you also have the options to go to enzymes and features from here also you don't need to uh, really go up so it's it's really handy and if you want to um, view in the sequence form it's here and it's the map form it's here okay so I hope this video was helpful in understanding how to import the sequences from UCSC genome browser into the Snapsyn uh, software how to design the primers and how to perform in silico cloning and how to perform in silico PCR to check the size of the PCR product. Thank you very much guys for your kind attention. Uh, thank you.